Hello, I am Mal, and welcome back to XCOM 2. So in the first episode of our new XCOM 2 series, I did the tutorial, and it was very much on rails, as you would expect from a tutorial mission. And I did it to show hey, some of the new game mechanics, uh, and plus there were some really, really cool and I think important cutscenes. But now we're going to get into a proper game. So I'm going to go ahead and start fresh here. We're going to check Legend difficulty, so we won't be doing the tutorial. And we're going to go into Operation Gatecrasher, which takes place on what's called Unification Day. And if you're not familiar with the story, that's sort of like a celebratory day uh, that the Advent government throws. And the sort of reconstituted XCOM group that we are now leading um, have decided to destroy a statue in one of the central plazas of the mega cities. Uh, they call it an elder. It's actually, uh, you know, an ethereal. Um, but we're going to go see if we can't blow that up and also smash some more alien faces. Now that we've got a foothold, it's time to take the fight to Advent. We're heading into the city center to take down a public target, something that will get people's attention. Neutralize any security forces in the area. Keep your heads down. Okay, now, all of the uh, soldiers on this mission should be coming from our character pool, so we'll see. Oh, I'm excited. Let's go do this. Menace 1-5. We have a fix on the target. Move to place the X-4 charges at the designated position. All right, let's take a look. Who's on the team? We've got Bruno, a.k.a. Vanguard. Marcella, a.k.a. Helsing. Uh, whoever this Mal guy is. And then Andrew, a.k.a. Nightmare. Actually, I usually don't put myself in the games, but uh, I think I mentioned... Actually, I know I mentioned that... I mean, remember Angel of Iron helped me put together the initial character pool, and he decided to add me to the game, which was was kind of funny. I probably won't be featured in any other episodes, so I just forgot to take myself out of the character pool. But maybe maybe I'll get killed, but like in a blaze of glory in this episode. Yeah, we'll see. Possible. Okay. Uh, how do we want to do this? Are there any windows on the front of this building? Doesn't look like it. None that we can use anyway. Alright, let's okay. move up and just take a look see here. Okay, re advent guys. Oh, sectoids. Okay, these guys are dangerous, folks. These are not the little funny, like scurrying around sectoids that we're accustomed to from the previous game. They are stronger than ever, with an even greater psionic potential. They can mind control, like uh, the sector commanders could do. They can pan they can do psi panic and make your character freak out. They can even reanimate the dead and you know create zombies. So that's kind of a priority target there. Yeah, it most certainly is. Hmm. Any way we could kill him this turn? I mean, maybe. We'd have to go loud right now, probably to be able to pull off a shot, but... I don't really want to do that. Affirmative. Moving out. Yeah, partial cover is not exactly healthy. Decent spot right there. All right, we're going to move down on the move. with Wu. We're not on a timer on this particular mission, which is nice. So we're just going to make it a little easy here in terms of not pushing it time-wise. 
Moving on target. We need to make sure that we get a good ambush out of concealment. Otherwise, this is going to be a really, really tough mission. Ten four. Yeah, after I got done working on the character pool, uh, I want to say last night, but it was technically today. I don't know, my, it, it's a little fuzzy for me, folks. <laughs> Launch day of a game I've been waiting for for a long time, so I've, I've just sort of been awake for a while, but that's okay. Uh, but, what I was going to say was that uh, one of the things that I've sort of discovered is that if you push a bad... There, there's no margin for error on Legend, I guess, is what I would say. Exactly the description they give you, that there's just no margin for error. On my way. So if you get a bad engagement from concealment to start it off, it's you're pretty much done. So I'm hoping this'll go well. This looks like a decent setup here. Go like this. Can I get a grenade on him? Because that would be nice. No, and I don't wanna engage these guys until that sectoid moves away a little bit. Okay. But do what I'm doing. Well, we'll see if it works out. But in theory, you want to do what I'm doing, folks. You want to take your time to set up a really good ambush from concealment and either tear apart a group or finish a group completely off. Okay, sectoids moving away. Okay, that's good. Okay, so these three advent jabbers we can go after. Well, why are you calling them jabbers? Well, because that's what they're called. Yeah. Because of the weird language that they have. Yep. Okay. Oh, I like this. Okay, you move over here. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello, grenade on all three of you. Okay, that'll work. All right, let's set up these overwatches. Overwatch. Overwatches from uh, concealment tend to hit. They don't have the same reaction fire penalties. Now, I say that, but we'll see what happens. All right. Woo, open it up. Oh, killed one outright. That was nice. Promotion earned. We've been spotted. Reaction shot. Nice. Very nice. Okay, two out of the three. One guy and one guy left with one hit point. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, now we've got the sectoid. He's got one trooper with him or two? Okay, one it looks like. And we need to finish this guy off. What's what's the deal? Oh, it's the same combat round. You still have an action. Oh. Well, take a shot. Nope, miss. Oh, 46%. What do you expect? And reaction shot. Oh, very nice. Good job. Target down. Okay, so first ambush was successful. Now we just have to hope because we've got a couple of people in partial cover that they don't get killed right now. And we have to get rid of that sectoid. You, you doing the zombie thing? What are you doing? Yep, the zombie thing. All right. So if we can kill him this turn, no respite for the dead. then we don't have to worry about the zombie because it'll it'll you know, whatever you know just kind of crumble to the ground. Don't hit! Don't hit! Don't hit! Don't hit! Okay, or hit I guess the other option clearly.
Okay, we gotta get Woo out of there. Yeah. Double time. Dash away. Don't think we can destroy that pillar the sectoids behind. What's what's down one level? Hmm. What about this structure back here? Can we go inside that? Oh, we can go inside that. Really? Oh, and we can go inside. Okay, let's use the pathing system then. So if you hold control, and it might be a little hard to see there in the fog of war, I'm gonna set my first waypoint, then I'm gonna set my second waypoint right next to the door. Okay, okay execute that move. So we're gonna drop down the ladder, and he'll follow the path that I want. Yep, just like that. So cool. For those of you maybe not familiar with uh, the previous game, you still had this two move system, one blue and then one yellow, um, but you couldn't you couldn't exactly control where you were going. So sometimes you, you know, path into things that you were like, what? I didn't want to do that. I think we're going to overwatch up here. And then Vanguard, where are we going to go with you? Yeah, I'm gonna throw a grenade on him. Oh, we did we just oh we did destroy his cover, I think. Yep, and there comes an Overwatch. Nice. Well, it wasn't quite enough. I hope he doesn't kill anyone. Oh, he's doing like a panic or something. Mind control. Yeah, mind control. That's okay. We can free him from that. Now, this has happened like once or twice to me. I think, that, or maybe this might be the second time. I don't know if this is working as intended, where it's like a screen like that. I, I don't know. Whoa, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, here comes the zombie. Again, if we can kill the sectoid, we... We'll free our guy from mind control, and we'll kill this zombie at the same time. Kill, kill, kill them all. A little too close for my comfort. All right, we have to make this happen. So, Advent Trooper is not on Overwatch. Okay, well, it would appear that it's actually up to me. You can't open and close doors now, which is awesome. Roger that. For a second, I thought somebody was over here overwatching. <laughs> I was like, no! Okay. 85%, you, you can literally put the gun in his ugly mouth. Please kill him. There you go. Well done. Oh, did he drop something? Oh, he did. Oh, that's awesome. What do we got here? Some loot that we really need. What do we get? Alarium core. Okay, nice. Use that in the proving grounds to uh, build equipment. Okay, we're gonna Overwatch. We're going to hunker down up here. And you, sir, are going to get out of line of sight. Because you are hurt. Oh, he doesn't want to... Uh, clever. He doesn't want to come forward. Uh, can't say that I blame him. On Overwatch. Je maintiens ma position. Scanning. We move over here Scanning with covered. Wu. There we go. Overwatch shot up. 
Yes! Yes! Okay, this is... This is going really well. Alright. We're not done yet. Okay. Well, let's... Let's, uh... Let's reload. It's nice, you can... Reload and not, uh, you know, not end your turn. That's pretty cool. You could do that next time, Long War, if you had, uh, lock and load, but now it's just Moving default. I, I guess this is to make up for the fact that you no longer have sidearms. Well, I mean, the sharpshooter gets a pistol, and I guess technically the ranger, it's not really a sidearm, but the ranger has a sword. But other than that, there's, there's, you know, there, there is no sidearms. I'm sure someone will mod that in. It's only logical that they would. That's affirmative. Good to go. All right, let's start moving forward together as a group. How are we doing on explosives? I think we, we have two or three grenades, which is pretty good, I think, at this stage of the mission. Orders confirmed. Move up a little Move bit. Out. Not too far. Come get some. Affirmatif. Je couvre la zone. Confirmed. I'm on it. Shh. I think I heard something. Hmm. Another advent group. Okay. On the move. So there's our objective. I'm a little, you know, a little wary about getting to it. Heading out. You know what? You hunker Inflation. down right there. Mm, excuse me, folks. All right, dash up there. And guard, you go over there. Cover that flank. Okay. Oh, Advent Officer. Okay. Nice shot. These guys are... These guys are dangerous also. Lots of dangerous things in XCOM 2, actually. But this guy can uh, mark... They can mark you. Make you easier to hit. Do more damage against you. Hmm. How many hit points does he have? Three? Alright. Slide back here. Right at the edge of visual range and set an overwatch. You move here. Toss your grenade. And please kill him. Well, it's three to four. It should be a guaranteed kill. There we go. Nice. Okay, and then I can't really take advantage of another grenade over here, so I think we're just gonna overwatch. I'm gonna overwatch over here as well. Alright. Come to me. Yeah, hi! How you doing? Oh, come on, you missed that shot? Bad me. Woo! I'm under fire! Oh, truck's on fire. We gotta move. Okay, 
He does have line of sight. Okay, so... Drop a grenade right at your feet. Maybe we'll destroy that little whatever it is. Obelisk or whatever that he's standing behind. Nope. Do we want to move up? No. Overwatch. 34%. We get a flank, but it's a little too risky. Move back here and go for a flank. Hmm. This guy could come around. Twenty-five percent. Yeah. Uh. No. 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 Don't hunker down. You'll die there. Whew. That was almost a mistake. You know what? I need you to withdraw. Heading there now. One hit point. You're just. You know. You're just asking to get killed, and I don't really want anybody to die if I can keep from it. Moving Overwatch. Thirty-four percent. That's not good enough to take that shot. Oh, yeah, see, we would have been toast. Well, it was a nice hit, but not enough. Okay, good, he missed. And we just need this other guy to miss, and maybe we'll be able to finish this up. Did you run through fire? Yeah! Nice shot! Good riddance. Okay, let's see. 30% chance to hit, huh? Can anyone get a flank? Can you move far enough to get a flank? No. Alright, well then let's shift. Overwatch. Got it covered. Position confirmed. Scanning. Orders confirmed on the move. Affirmative covering. All right. Come here, you scumbag. Get him! Get him! Oh no! Come on, come on, come on! We can do it! Yes! Is that it? Target eliminated. Area is secure. Oh We're yeah! Area process. is secure. Clear. Menace 1 5, we have a limited window to act before Advent responds. We need to get those charges planted on the double. I don't think there's going to be any more... Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any more aliens. Back online! Affirmative, covering now. Come get some! Menace 1-5, we have a limited window to act before Advent responds. We need to get those charges planted on the double. Menace 1-5, rendezvous at the extraction point. Status confirmed. Squad is clear. Dead Boom. So cool. All right, mission complete. Operation Gatecrasher. High fives, everybody. Nine enemies killed. One soldier was wounded. However, we got an excellent rating. So I'd say for our first foray into a proper XCOM 2 mission, that worked out pretty well for us. All right, 50% success rate on the shot. Damage, most damage dealt, that Mal guy. Average damage per attack, that Mal guy. Average enemies killed per turn. 0.57, under the most fire, woo. Average cover bonus, 34%, also woo. I like this recap screen, that's pretty neat. 
All right, let's do this. I'm glad to see our new recruits oh. are hesitating when it comes poor. to taking out the aliens. Poor Wu. He's like, oh, I must make it. Nice, we got these promotions. Let's do it. Grenadier! Alright. experts. The Grenadiers provide heavy ordnance delivery whenever and wherever we need it. Nice! So we'll talk about this as we go along, but the Grenadiers have two two passes, as you can see here, demolitions and heavy gunner. And essentially it boils down to this. You can make a shooty kind of um, heavy gunner, as it says here, and you can take things that make them more resilient and make them sort of like frontline combatants, or you can go exclusively down the demolition uh, tree and essentially just make somebody that blows a bunch of stuff up. I I kind of like the blow the stuff up thought process, so we'll just have to see how we're going to build it out. Now again, I am uh, you know experiencing XCOM 2, you know for the first time here. So if you've got suggestions on, um, you know, different builds uh, for these various uh, soldier types, please feel free to share that in the comments. I, I look forward to that. Just like it sounds, our sharpshooters engage enemy targets with pinpoint accuracy from extreme range. They're also trained in pistol marksmanship for the occasional close encounter. So we'll get a structure very early on called the Guerrilla Tactics School. And in that school, you can retrain to different uh, to different MOSs. So we'll be changing some of these. Like, for instance, you know, Marcella, the reason she's in that white uniform is because she's supposed to be, um, you know, like a combat medic. So we will likely end up retraining her. The Ranger serves as oh, he actually got the thing he needed. Good. Capable of moving independently in concealment while engaging enemies at close range. Oh, I kind of skipped over the, the specialist. You can kind of, I mean, you can mix and match however you want, but there's two trees. Uh, one of them is sort of combat hacking focus, and the other one is more the traditional... Um, buff slash healer that you would have from a, a traditional medic from the previous game. The Ranger uh, is a kind of a combination of the Assault class from the previous game and the Scout class from XCOM Long War. Sort of a, a mixture of that. So they do have a secondary weapon, a close-in weapon, the Slash, that sword on their back, which is pretty cool. Um... And you can build them to be sort of a, you know, a, a quote unquote blade master and to be able to do a lot of interesting things with melee weapons, including chaining multiple melee attacks together, sort of a in the zone version, um, but, uh, you know, in their face with a blade, which is kind of cool. So you kill one alien, then you get another attack, so on and so forth. So that's kind of neat. And then the other one is more, um, it's, it, it's really more about stealth. Being able to preserve your stealth, even if the, the team is revealed, um, and really it's kind of to set up more type of flank shots and whatnot, sort of a more shooty type uh, of, of an assault, or excuse me, a ranger. Okay, and what are you going to promote to? Specialist, okay, good. Operating some of our most advanced equipment, specialists deploy robotic drones on the battlefield that can be outfitted for combat or field medic duty. Okay, so here, like I was saying, you've got Combat Hacker or Battle Medic for the Specialist. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. The Sharpshooter, I didn't touch on that because I was thinking, oh, she's a Specialist, but she's not. But the, the Sharpshooter, you've got um, the traditional Sniper role, Long Range Combat. And then you also have uh, kind of Up Close and Personal. You can specialize um, as a Gunslinger. Uh, and you think, well, you know, why would I want to do that on a, on somebody that can fire from long range? Well, the Gunslinger is pretty powerful um, because it allows you to take multiple shots in the same turn. There's a certain sniper 
abilities that can do um, multiple Overwatch shots a turn. But as far as being able to choose your targets, um, the the Gunslinger can take multiple shots. I think up to three by the end by the end tier promotion. And you combine that with special ammunition, uh, like Dragon, I think it's called Dragon Fire, where you can set somebody on fire. You can take multiple shots, and it applies to the pistol as well. So you can do some really cool things with the Gunslinger. So we're going to have to kind of mix and match how we do this. All right, so we got us an Alarium Core. Yeah, it says we could use them to power a variety of advanced weapons, armors, and munitions. So we can use that in the Proving Ground once we have one. Which is sort of, um, it's kind of like the Foundry from the previous game, but y you don't know what you're going to get. So you're kind of like playing um, Russian Roulette Foundry game. <laughs> and you'd, like, you'll get different things, like I mentioned, that special ammo and things like that can come out of the uh, Proving Ground. Got us some corpses. Okay. Commander, the ongoing stress of combat can shake up even the best of our soldiers. Oh, okay. As, as we keep them healthy. I'm sure they'll recover given time. Okay, so Wu's hurt. Like, mentally. Go to the research. Impressive, isn't it? Okay, we've already seen that cutscene from the previous episode. Let's assign some research. I'm gonna start with, and, and again, at least in this first campaign, folks, let, let's remember that I have maybe, well, I don't know, three hours of on hands time with XCOM 2 and I'm playing on Legend <laughs> so we'll see how well this campaign goes I'm trying to learn as I go and I'm making some educated guesses quite frankly like for instance modular weapons I'm gonna start with that research is it better than doing hybrid or alien biotech first I I'm not a hundred percent sure um, but if we're gonna recover items from the field we want to be able to attach weapon mods to our weapons we can't do that unless we have this research so to me, this seems like a good first that choice. Area of research to be among the more intriguing options available. Oh, do you? We'll do you? Work do you, Tygen? I'll send word when a complete. Re okay, reworked your repulsors with some of the parts I salvaged from their old engine. Should fix that stabilization problem you had. Come on, Rover. It'll work. Commander. Getting our tech to talk to theirs is harder than you'd think. Lily Shen, Chief Engineer, at your service. You are probably expecting to see my father. In all that's happened, I'm guessing Central didn't tell you yet. He's gone. Dad gave everything he had to get us this far. This entire ship is his life's work. I know he would have loved to show you around the place himself. He used to talk about you a lot. You can be sure I'm ready to finish what he started. Might not look it, but from here, I can fabricate pretty much anything you come up with. And with a little more help, well, you'd be amazed with what I can do. It was an honor to finally meet you, Commander. Okay, now let's take a look at facilities There's that we can to build. We expand our facilities on board the Avenger, Commander, but we'll need more engineers to clear out space for construction first. So we can't we can't unlock we can't unlock this as I understand it because we do not have an available engineer yet. Um, right? Commander, I'm going to need more help on the engineer. Or can we? Before I can start clearing out. No, nope, we can't. We need an engineer. We should recruit an engineer. Yes. Okay, I understand. So this is, you know, this is, you know, it's very much um, like what we're used to from the previous title, right? This is a quote unquote, the ant farm. The difference here is that as we clear away um, alien debris, we actually gain something from it, not just the space, uh, but we gain supplies from it, which is, you know, our, that's the currency in this is it's supplies. You can see we've got 150 supply income per month right now. We currently have 175 or six of 12 on power. Um, that's something else, too. Um, see these exposed power coils that I have down here in the center? That, that's actually not bad placement. At least I don't think it is. Um, this is kind of like the um, steam vents. That's exactly what it's like. It's like the steam vents from um, Enemy Unknown. So if you you know if we were to build a thermal generator there, we would get more power. So if we build a 
I think it's called a power relay on top of one of these uh, exposed power coils, then we'll get more efficiency. And then you can assign um, engineers to increase power from those even further. But we'll get into all that as we move along. Uh, let's see, we have one space open. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see. We need a guerrilla tactics school, like, right away. So I'm going to go ahead and invest the money to build that. I'll send word when it's up and running. Now, another another building that we're going to want really early on is the advanced warfare. Yep. Having never stepped foot in one of the city centers, I've never actually had one of these advent burgers I keep hearing rumors about. Advent burgers. No, really so the guerrilla tactic school allows us to retrain our people. We can change them from a, a specialist to a sharpshooter, a sharpshooter to a ranger, so on and so forth. It does take some time. I think it's 10 days to retrain a soldier. Aside from us and ship, you always want to be training a rookie in there, too. That's work. easy to miss. I haven't felt particularly um, useful in a long time. No sense taking a rookie on a mission if you can already have them trained up to uh, squatty level and actually have some kind of a specialty, right? So, guerrilla tactics school, we're going to go with that first, and then I think it's Advanced Warfare Center or Advanced Warfare College. AWC is the is another top priority for me because that'll that reduces healing time, so it functions as like a you know souped up med bay, and then in addition to that. You can randomly get perks from other trees, like not even your own, like a ranger could end up with something from, say, like a sharpshooter tree um, every time a soldier promotes if you have that particular building. So I think the earlier you get that, the better, right? OK, let's see. We do have Intel. That's another form of currency. Um, you use this to uh, buy things like at the black market, like you can rush research and do other things. But let's let's go to the bridge. Let's take a look at the new and improved Geoscape. Commander, good to see you on your feet again. Welcome to the bridge, the nerve center of our operation. The aliens have our entire world in their grip. Advent controls everything. Government, communications, industry, not to mention the military. And it's on us to take it all back. Resources and time are tight, Commander. It'll be up to you to decide how to best use both. The ship is yours. Thank you, Bradford. Thank you. While we prepare for new operations and continue our research, we can pass time by scanning at sites like this one. On your order, we'll start our scans on the surrounding area. Commander, one of our resistance contacts just tipped us off to a site that may be worth investigating. Ooh, an engineer reward. Yes, we will definitely investigate that. So, we're gonna fly over here. Now, if we'd stayed at resistance headquarters, we could have passed time and we would have gained... I think we would have gained intel from doing that? <clears throat> yeah, I gained intel. ...will help us search the area for clues or other resources. It's going to take some time, though. We've got a lot of ground to cover. So somewhere over here, there's supposed to be an engineer. It's going to take us four days to search for him, him or her. And something else could come up at this time, too, and draw us away. All right, nice. Now that we have more staff on the engineering team, we can start clearing out space for new facilities, Commander. We should keep looking for more recruits, though. We'll need them to staff the facilities once they're built. Commander, our recent success, members of Resistance in New, in New Mexico have brought us reports of activity they may want to investigate. Rookies, huh? <clears throat> well... Avenger plotting new course. All right. Takes us a little further out, but okay. Guess we can do that. Actually, I should probably go back to Resistance HQ. Not finished, can you, sure you want to leave? Well, <clears throat> I want to assign... Oh, wait, hold on. Right. I don't have to go back to Resistance HQ to do this. Right here. Assign... You. Yep. Instruction speak increased by 50%. So now this will only take 12 days. All of the structures and everything that we build have a significantly longer build time. So if you're playing the game, you're like, whoa, how come his build time so high? It's because we're playing on Legend difficulty. That's one of the uh, big, big differences between even Legend and, say, uh, even Commander difficulty is, is the additional time. 
Okay, let's go back to the Geoscape now that we've assigned that engineer. These findings will likely prove crucial to Okay, our let's assign new research. Uh, let's see. Hybrid materials, which leads to, I think, new armor. Mag weapons, 63 days? Yeah, no, I don't think so. We'll do, we'll do hybrid materials next. A number of valuable applications stemming from this technology. I'll have a report assembled as soon as the research is complete. Commander. As the resistance continues to grow, we'll have a better chance of finding openings to A new target for advantage. guerrilla operations. As it is, we've already identified a potential target to disrupt the aliens' operations in this region. Mm. Our window of opportunity is limited, so we'll have to move fast. So the question is, do we continue what we're doing up here and potentially get some new rookies, or do we go take on Operation Defiant Fear and get Dr. Benjamin Thompson? Hmm. That's... that's tough to say. That is tough to say. Well, I'm going to think about that, and we will move into that, either that operation, or we'll continue scanning in the next one. I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I am Mal, and I will see you later.